Can't wait till I can start losing some weight. I feel like my face looks fat. That's a very female thing of me to say. <clears throat> the hills are alive with the sound of music. Oh, this is a nice car. It probably does something important. Mm. Hi, Poppy. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It is a beautiful day in Chesapeake, Virginia. It was raining last night and it has cleared up and we're going to see some nice skies and it's going to finally feel like fall, I think. I think. I, I think we're actually going to experience fall weather today. So, good morning. Um, I've had a lot of things on my heart this week and I feel like this. Me what I want to say today is not just for me, it's for so many people who will or will not watch this live today. So the last two weeks I feel like I have let my life be navigated by my sadness, my depression, my circumstance, um, my fear, my anxiety. And um, I had these really weird, crazy dreams last night. Like my mind's just been racing. Like I just feel like I'm in one of those valleys of my life where everything that could go wrong does go wrong. And like, you're like, you think to yourself, it really can't get any worse than this. And then it does get worse. It just does sometimes, it gets worse. And um, I was really sad yesterday, uh, but my friend Shanti tried to keep me afloat and I hope I wasn't a Krabby Patty. And I feel like I've been a Krabby Patty the last couple of days. And I, 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 I thought this morning, also I wanna say hi, thank you to Greg and Ashley for your hospitality and for making a way for me to eat breakfast today. I, I have wonderful friends. Um, God is not a God of fear. God is not a God of chaos. He is not a God of turmoil or heartache. And um, I've been, reading the book of Acts. And if you know anything about the book of Acts, it talks about this guy named Saul. Long story short, Saul was not really a good person. He was prosecuting a lot of Jews uh, and Christians. Well, good Jews. <coughs> and uh, God used, good morning, God used Saul, this prosecutor of Jews. God used Saul to bring people to Christ. That's just how amazing God is. And I thought to myself, if God would use a, a, a bad man like Saul to do his work, what then could God be using me for? Um, I believe that nothing in life happens for a reason, that God has a plan for everything. So there is a reason why I am in this valley. There's a reason why I... Good morning, Brooklyn! I want to see your pretty face soon. So I say that to all of you. There, that all of us have a purpose in this life and you never know how God is going to use you. I hope that God uses me through my LLC and my writing and my book one day. Good morning, Lee. But I have learned in the wilderness, because I am in the wilderness, that God is not a God of fear, chaos, or all of those terrible things. Um, as I was reading the book of Acts today, I am reminded that God is a loving God. So if something is hateful, mean, cruel, gossiping, terrible, it's not of God. God is a redeemer. He is a healer. He's a forgiver. And I have to, I'm trying not to cry today because my Aunt Flo is in town and I just feel like, you know, how this makes you naturally moody. Um, I have to forgive myself for a lot of things, choices that I made these last two years, you know, leaving my TV job having to walk away from certain people, men I thought I would love and marry forever. I have to forgive myself for that. It happens. I'm, not, I'm human. I'm not perfect. Um, and God tells me all the time. He says, Lauren, the only reason why you're not released from this is because you haven't released yourself. You know, and even in this valley of my life, God says to me every day, you have survived, Lauren. Why don't you give yourself credit for surviving? I'm really hard on myself. God said you survived. I took you from suicide attempts that should have killed you, Lauren. They should have, but they didn't. So I still have work for you. And I need to focus on those things when the chaos of this life gets hard, because it does. And I am grateful that I know a God that is forgiving and loving. I'm grateful because there are some people that don't know him. And um, 
I have to remind myself of the things that I've learned in this valley. I've had to grow up a lot this year, and I have. I've had to wake up every day and say, God, how are we going to do this today? God, I don't want to put on makeup and I don't want to try. And God said, I'm sorry, honey, you got to try. And we all have our crosses to bear in this life, and I know what mine are. I am human, though. I get weary. And I have. I've been very depressed these last two weeks, especially as the holidays come. And I'm probably going to spend the holidays without my family for the first time, and that's okay. There is a scripture in Matthew that God says, I have come to separate you from your parent, your mother and your father, right? That, that no man should come before me, that God comes before everything else. And um, I had to lose everything dear in my life to know that to be true. Um, I thought about my TV days. A lot of people have been joking me lately about this storm coverage I used to do on Hampton Roads, which is funny. I don't know why everybody thinks that's so funny, being out in hurricanes. It's not funny. It's actually slightly dangerous. But anyways, <clears throat> and I thought about the woman I was when I had the TV job. Did I know God the way that I know him now? No. I, I, I went to this high-powered TV job. I got in my cute little Beetle. I dated these hot, smoking men. But I'm, I'm telling you, I didn't know God half the way that I know him now. Um, I know that I sought to feel... I think we all have a void in our life, and I think that it's supposed to be God is that void. And I did a lot of different things to fill that void. I was anorexic. I was like a size 4 because I felt like I had to be skinny to be on air. Um... I accepted people in my life that I knew weren't good for me, spiritually, professionally, um, romantically. And um, I had all of these blessings around me, but I don't think that I really knew God. I think I was one of those Sunday Christians that went to church on Sunday and read the Bible every now and then, and I was nice and good, and so I thought that meant that, you know, that I was, that I was a lover of God. But when you have to really get up every day and say, God, we, how are we going to do this today? God, how are you going to pinch my tongue so I don't go off on that person that came at me wrong today? Um, and that's what I've gone through in this valley. And I've also had to, I've had to say, uh, I thought to myself this morning that um, it was raining, so these seats are probably wet. I think it's very easy to, it, it's easy to love him in the sunlight, you know? It is. But can you love God in the storm, right? When you look around and you're like, where am I going to sleep today? Do I eat today? How am I going to get money the next day? When you're in that valley of your life, can you still praise God? And that's hard. Um, I, I, have met, I have met people this year that have gone through the unthinkable the unthinkable moments that should have broken them moments that should have made them bitter about life about people about God and it is those moments that they learn that God is graceful and loving and that tells me that even in this valley of my life I have to I have to be I still have to praise him in this storm because there are there he's still blessing me in the storm Back when I lived with my parents, I watched this Joel Osteen uh, sermon, and he was talking about being the calm in the storm. And uh, that's kind of a hard thing to do if everything around you is going crazy. How can you be the calm in the middle of a storm? And Joel said, Joel said, you too can be the calm in the storm. And at that moment, I didn't realize that I was going to enter the toughest storm I'd ever entered in my life, probably worse than you know, my depression that lasted two years. This year has been very, very hard on me. Um, then a couple of months later, I met a Buddhist in Virginia Beach. There are a couple of Buddhist temples here, if you did not know, there are. This Buddhist had never met me. He's a monk. I was really tired because I was out late that night and I stumbled upon this Buddhist temple. So crazy. Like, don't laugh at me. I thought this Buddhist temple was a restaurant. <laughs> Why? It was like, it was literally five, like six o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> I drove up to this Buddhist temple because it had all these beautiful statues and I was being nosy. 
and then I went into the temple and it was gorgeous gorgeous temple and this monk comes because they get up every morning and they do these rituals and he says you're up before me and I was like oh crap he's gonna kick me out I'm not supposed to be here he said no he said you look you're tired I said yeah I am tired and um, he this monk again I did not know this monk from Adam he says your loved ones have betrayed you life is hard for you he said but even you can can have peace in this storm and so this monk who did not know me at all pretty much reaffirmed what Joel had told me earlier this in this season of my life and he said um, he said there is a way to have peace in this storm we live in a world of chaos but that doesn't mean that you have to succumb to that chaos and uh, the monk let me sleep in the temple because I was very tired and I stayed for their um, their um, the ceremony that they did that, that the service that they did and I meditated with them and then I fell asleep during meditation I was literally tired and um, but I never forgot what that monk said I've been to that temple a couple times since then I've met him he he's very funny he likes to laugh um, and every time I go to this Buddhist temple I feel at peace because I feel like that was a time in my life where God intervened again and said Lauren the storm in your life you don't have to succumb to the storm so I say that to anyone who feels like they are in the wilderness or in a storm of their of their finances if their if their if their love life is chaotic or what have you um, there is there is a way to um, you can be peaceful in the midst of the chaos of this world because it is chaotic I mean look at our election cycle crap you can feel peace and so every day I try really really hard to stay at its place of peace now for me I'm not I'm not you know saying I'm not projecting my Christianity on you for me my peace comes from knowing a loving and graceful God a God that reached into the the depths of my depression and told me that I was still worthy and I was still valuable in this life because you know when I the times I attempted suicide I felt like I had no value so yeah things are tough that right now they are very tough um, reading about Saul today was very was good stuff I'll call you in a second here Constance talking about Saul I vaguely knew the story of Saul but Saul was not he was not he was not a good guy but God used Saul. A friend of mine, um, a couple days ago, I posted this blog, this little Facebook thing about a friend who asked me to write 50 things about myself that were valuable or whatever. He it was talking to me a couple days ago. I was very depressed and sad. And <clears throat> I said to this friend, I said, I am nobody. I don't have a, I don't have a career anymore people nobody you know people recognize me I think you know people look at me and they're like I know you from somewhere and I'm like oh I used to work for in, for Wavy and they're like oh. um but the guy said what do you mean that you're nothing he said you do have a lot to value and I said he said I know that this moment in your life is very difficult but you still have value and this friend uh, he and I did a story together about um, the african-american drowning rates in Lynchburg uh, back when I was a reporter there and he challenged me to write 50 positive things about myself. I'm not going to lie. That was not an easy feat. <laughs> when you are feeling depressed and terrible about yourself, the last thing you want to do is write down positive things. Um, but I got through it. Some of them were very silly, like I do good makeup <laughs> or I write well. Um, but I think sometimes we all could be reminded of our value and our worth. And he said, he said to me, Hi, Sarah. Good morning. How's it going? It's going. Good. <laughs> I know her. I know everybody. Um, he said to me, he said, Lauren, what would you want to do with your life if you, if, if money were not, oh God, I know this guy too. Anyways, he said, Lauren, what would you want to do with your life if money were not an object, if you, you know, didn't have depression or whatever, what would you want to do? I said, you know, honestly, I want to inspire I know that sounds so cliche I want to motivate people to live their best lives I want to be a historian a storyteller again somehow it might not be for television news um, 
I want to be powerful and impactful. He said, Lauren, all of those things are within your your realm. They are. Um, and uh, that, doing that exercise was very... Oh, sugar, you made me cry. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and to not harm you. Give you hope and a future. Um, thank you. I really... The reason why, I, you know, it's so funny. The reason why I even got back on a Facebook was because I hadn't been on for two years because my depression got really bad. And I had started to chart my weight loss journey. And then it, it morphed into sharing a story about my depression. And um, I don't want to be anyone's pity party or charity case. But I literally felt God speak to me one day. And he said, people need to know why you are not on TV anymore. They need to know that mental illness is real. They need to know that it took a, a beautiful black woman like you away from her dreams. Um, and they need to see you get up from this. And I said, man, God, you know, that's really intimate. I, I have been very ashamed and guilty and I've hid my mental illness since I was 16. There are still a lot of people from high school that didn't know that I dealt with severe anxiety attacks in high school because I, like a lot of people, was taught to be ashamed of my mental illness. And then when I fell into a depression at 18, then I really didn't tell anybody about it. Even in some of the best moments of my TV career, I was suffering. And, um... I feel, like I said, I feel like we all have our own cross to bear. We all have our own purpose. I feel for this moment in my life, my purpose is to show others that you can live with mental illness. You can get up from this. Your family might not understand. Your friends might not understand. But just because you are mentally ill doesn't mean that you're broken or not of use anymore. And I feel that God is going to make me a powerful mental health advocate. Next year, I want to be going to the Capitol to advocate for better legislation for people with mental illness. Because uh, in the state of Virginia, we severely need it. And um, that is my new calling, I feel. I feel like I have the natural gift of gab, clearly. Um, I feel like God is going to restore me in a way where I'm going to be on TV or radio again. I work very feverishly for that. And I've made some amazing connections this year. Um, but uh, that's not to say that God is not a genie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a genie. So I'm not going to wake up today and say, boom, Jesus, I need my own talk show. It just don't, it just don't work that way. So, um, in order to, I feel to fulfill this new calling that God has in my life, I have to get up every day. I have to put on makeup and look presentable. I have to try. Um, but it's happening. Oh, I was listening to that Mary Mary song survived, you know, meaning you are walking through the valley you're walking through the wilderness you can't just you can't just in the book of james it says that phenomenally faith without works is dead so if you are a believer faith is believing what is not seen okay so i believe that one day i might have my own talk show i might have an interview with oprah who freaking knows I know in my heart one day that Good Girl Chronicles is going to be a book. I hope it's a best-selling book. Um, I know in my heart one day that Good Girl Chronicles LLC is going to be an amazing, amazing company here in Hampton Roads. I know in my heart that I'm going to be a powerful mental health advocate because I have been to the lows of suicide. I have been to the lows of homelessness. I have been there. And so I have a perspective that maybe these legislators don't see. But the other part of that Matthew scripture says, faith without works is dead so that means like rihanna says i gotta get off my butt every day and i gotta work work means reading his word work means praising his name work means writing work means going to these networking things work means learning what the industry is saying about social media so um so yeah i'm working y'all i'm working because I walk by faith, not by sight, and I feel that God is, is going to restore me, even with every setback. Um, Quinta, you want to have your... <laughs> Bye, Sarah. I'll probably see you later. I know, right? I'm too sweet. <laughs> I will get to interview DeAndre, and you're, you're the bee's knees. 
you know what's so funny? I was joking with my friend the other day. They were like, what is going to be the name of your Oprah interview? I was like, I don't know. From Hollywood to Homeless? I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I also believe that's a very grandiose thing to say that I'm going to sit down with Oprah one day. But it's funny. Like, in college, you know how you get superlatives? My superlative was most likely to replace Oprah. Isn't that funny? And then back when I was, like, in middle school and high school, I would do, like, these interviews with people, and they would... It was funny. I do feel like God has been leading my footsteps to uh, a career in television. Um, because this is not... TV was not my first love. I wanted to be a writer like Daniel Steele. <laughs> Maybe I still will be. If you all don't know, side note, I write a fictional blog called Jenny Blow. Maybe Jenny Blow will be my soap opera. I don't know. But <clears throat> I also want to say that I believe that God wants us all to be dreamers. I don't think that, that our society believes in dreamers anymore. You know, I think a lot of us believe that we're supposed to get a corporate job, work nine to five, have no life, never go on vacation, this, that, and the third, whatever. Wrong, wrong. Uh, granted, we all got to have uh, money to pay the bills. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but there's a reason why we have these quirky, uh, high in the sky, apple pie dreams. Whether it's to be a writer, whether it's to be an actress, whether it's to be a teacher, there's a reason why God gives us all certain desires of our heart. There's a reason why God gives us all certain dreams. And I think it's sad that when a lot of people reach the end of their life, they have never even tried their dream. If I never get my own talk show, I want to be able to say to my grandkids, I damn well tried. <laughs> I tried, I tried, I tried. And, you know, I, I've accomplished a lot of things at 32. I worked for the number one station in Hampton Roads. I worked for MTV. Um, I, I've done incredible things, and I feel that God still has so much more in store for me. So I hope that you also take from any Facebook Live or YouTube that you see of me, I hope you also take that God wants us to be dreamers. It's in Corinthians about spiritual gifts. It's in Psalms about um, delight thyself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Desires are dreams. God wants us to have a good man. God wants us, to, if that's what you desire, you might not desire that. I don't know. I do. Even though all around me it does not look like <sighs> Tyrese is taking too long to come scoop me up. Too long. But I, I believe that God wants us to be dreamers. I believe God is a redeemer and a forgiver. And so we all need to give ourselves a break. I say that to myself, myself included. For sure, for sure. And <clears throat> speaking of recognizing your blessing in your wilderness, I just want to say thank you for the beautiful people that have been a blessing to me this past year giving me rides, feeding me, letting me sleep on your couch, encouraging me, making me laugh, all of that. It means the world to me. It really, really does. And there's a scripture that I love, I love, I love. Every time I hear it and, and say it in my soul, like I get emotional. It says, I will rebuild you and you will dance again. And so this is my rebuilding. I will never be the same after this, this wilderness of my life. And so on the other side of this wilderness, the other side of the valley is a mountaintop. <laughs> and we are going to dance. And when we dance, I hope that you are all there. I hope you are all there. I feel like you are all my little cheerleaders. And I'm coming, I'm, I'm walking through it. I'm walking through it. Well, the sun is shining in Chesapeake, Virginia. And I have a lot of shit to do today. Jesus knows that I have a problem with saying the S word. Side note, I never cursed as a kid, like, ever. And so when I felt, like, liberated from my parents, one of the first things I wanted to do was curse. I know that sounds so weird. Like, at 32, I feel like an adult being able to say the S word. It's kind of silly. That's another story in itself. You, you, the, the whole good, goody two-shoes is not a facade. I literally have lived a goody two-shoes cookie-cutter life for my parents for a long time. Um, I don't really know that that's exactly who I was, but it's who my parents wanted me to be. <laughs> so sometimes feeling free enough to say shit is empowering. 
So this Friday, I hope you have a beautiful day. I hope you know that God is not a God of chaos, fear, turmoil, or heartbreak. Those things are not of God. God is a love is a, a lover, your best friend, your redeemer, your forgiver, grace and mercy. God wants you to be a dreamer. He wants you to live a beautiful, abundant life. But you have to be brave enough to take that leap of faith. You have to be brave enough to go for it. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Is it gonna be like hot or cold today? Which one is the, which one is it gonna be? So I'm gonna go get another one of the it's a very weak coffee at Panera, but I can't I can't really complain. It's all it's all you can drink, so I'm gonna go in here and try to jazz up this coffee. And I hope you all have a fantastic Friday. It's Fine Fellas Friday, where Good Girl Chronicles me, the good girl who chronicles her life, shows love to amazing fine fellas. Men who are wonderful, awesome, fabulous. I would call DeAndre a fine fella because he drove me around and even went to the social security office with me, which is a very humbling experience. So take time to think the fine fella in your life today. Because I know women, we do a lot of male bashing. Let, let's just take this one day, this one moment to praise a good man in your life because they do exist. So as we say here, good girl chronicles, I love you. And I love God more. We'll see you next time.